We turn now, Pablo, to your previous employer, Sports Illustrated. And no, we're not going to talk about their use of artificial intelligence to generate stories. We're going to talk mm. about their choice for Sportsman of the Year, Deion Sanders. Considering his team has lost six in a row and eight of nine since their magical start in September, does this choice make sense to you? It does insofar as I worked at Sports Illustrated, and I, I have a feeling that they made this decision a month or two ago. Back when Colorado was not 4-8 and eight and ending the season on a tremendous losing streak. I believe that they saw that Deion Sanders was a revolutionary figure of sorts. They put their chips in the center of the table on him. So the practicality of magazines, this is how it happens. But man, this looks bad. It's been a bad week, Tony. I like how you put SI on me exclusively as if you did not have bylines there yourself once upon a time. <laughs> it's a bad look, but we share that look residually. You and me both got to share that look. Yes, and, and uh, yes, I understand that. I'll, I'll get to the Deion Sanders thing immediately. Um, I think you have to look at the landscape of sports in 2023. Nothing really exciting happened, unless you consider the dissolution of the Pac-12 and conference realignments to be something we're talking about, or the failure of the Women's World Cup team or, or something yep. like that. But if, if, and I don't, I don't think it rises to that level. You had Denver winning the NBA. You had Texas winning the World Series. You had Kansas City again winning the Super Bowl. So that's, there are no blockbusters there no. to me. I mean, I mean, if, for example, if Shohei Otani hadn't gotten hurt, maybe he'd be the sportsman of the year. If Aaron Rodgers hadn't gotten hurt, Maybe he'd be the sportsman. You're Bruce Boshi. Is he going to sell a lot of magazines? UConn? Seriously? <laughs> you know, a Novak Djokovic, get out of here with that. Maybe the transfer portal. But I can defend Dion on this level. And you use the right word. For a time there, he appeared to be revolutionary. For a time there, he appeared to be the smartest guy in the world. And on this particular show, when they started out by beating TCU in Nebraska, we talked about Dion every single day. Every single yes. day for at least a month and a half and Dion helped us because he's a great self-promoter. He is. He's well, great. Tony, the only name I can consider in terms of a pop cultural crossover figure in sports this year is Travis Kelsey, right? Won the Super Bowl, is now dating Taylor Swift. But the reason you pick Travis Kelsey are the reasons you pick Dion Sanders. It's the stuff off the field. It's the guy who gamed the attention economy. That's right. So in that way, I'm not so, I'm not so scandalized by Dion as their choice, to be honest. I'm going to go further. I'm going to go further, that when Dion was at, at the height, I mean, I know it's turned bad lately and there's stories that he can't get any recruits, and I'm sure coaches are happy if Transfer that's true. Portal, yeah. But Dion Sanders had more impact than anyone all year. Dion Sanders gave more hope to more people than anyone all year, and he also got television ratings that were tremendous. And I'm glad you mentioned Travis Kelsey, because there's one person better than Dion, and it's not him. And Sports Illustrated is not going to make... Taylor Swift, the sportsman of the well, year. That would have moved magazines. Would be it.